All right, hello and welcome to Torch's Group Opener against Atlanta Soul. We are so excited to be here today. Now welcome Lily White to the mic, everybody. Lily White. Frisbee. Observers are sitting the now. Hey, Torch, we are looking. Let's get this game started. I'm Jeff Patterson. Let's do that again. We are looking. Some of the names that really made a difference last year, Naomi Anderson and Emma, Emma Jaschke, both huge, huge impact players for Seoul. Excited to see them back this year. like we've got Maggie Rowell out for her first point with Torch this season along with Jamie Estes we've got Meg Duffy Gabby Quina Shrew Lou Elise Bjork Soul starting with the disc to pull the Discraft Ultra Star is the official disc of the Premier Ultimate League. Discraft, the world leader in disc sports. It's Danny Ortiz with the disc number 10 to pull for Seoul. And here we go.
Duffy picking up the lit disc and looking for Lou to center. Couldn't tell at first, but Captain Sydney Squid also on the field. Lou finds Bjork, who's looking for Estes, a little too long. Soul picking up the disc with a chance to answer here. Big D by Gabby Quina. There's a pick called on the field. Great D getting the disc back. That's number 18 for Seoul. Getting another chance. A turn. A little bit back and forth this first point. Both teams finding their footing. Some chatter in the comments from some Seoul fans. Tristan Grizel and Therese Dobler's fans coming from Tampa to play with this Atlanta team. Some contact on the field. Maggie Rao picking up the disc. Finding Bjork. A big break throw, knocked down. Oh, but caught by Jamie Estes for the first score of the game. Great defensive effort from Seoul, but Torch still finishes on top. A lot of back and forth on that first point. Caitlin, what are you thinking just from that first point going into this first half? Yeah, I was really impressed by the Souls' defensive intensity. Um, I think they're just looking to get uh, clean offense then moving back up field. But uh, Torch was able to really contend downfield uh, and then have patience outside the end zone to be able to get the first score of the game. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, with this season opener, uh, as both teams are finding their footing, important to uh, remain calm and keep the disc when you get into that red zone. Uh, and not waste any opportunities to score. <laughs> Vanessa Bacorn on this D-line with her torch debut as well. Vanessa mentioned by Kaylin at the beginning of the game, an absolute menace on the field. So fast, even if you know exactly where she's going, pretty hard to keep up. Good handler space uh, pressure from Jocelyn Jassup and Mendiata. Elise Frankie not giving up any easy unders as well. Pushing Soul farther back. Huge strike. And a big pull from number three, Alexandra Kruger, AKA Galaxy, with her sole debut. Intended receiver just couldn't quite keep her feet underneath her on that deep cut.
Trey Esparza with a diss. Stall's getting high. Mendiata comes down with it. Finds Vanessa coming in to get that reset and an easy dump back to Mendiata. Vanessa doing a great job getting that disc reset for the handle space and dropping the stall back to zero. For those at home not as familiar with Ultimate Frisbee, once you have the disc, you do have to stop running and you have about 10 seconds to get the throw off. Big catch from number 15, Elise Frankie. She finds Mediata for a reset. Torch doing a great job working up the field. Vanessa again, Vanessa Bacorn. Annie Ortiz, number 12, season vet for Torch, coming in for the fill. <laughs> Big round from Esparza and Vanessa Bitcoin's first score for the Torch season. Caitlin, what do you think about your prediction so far for Vanessa? Really exciting to watch Vanessa just dominate on the field. Uh, again, just echoing what Jet said, Vanessa is so fast and just really tough to guard. Um, I really liked the patience too by Torch. Uh, as soon as they got outside their end zone, uh, really swinging the disc and waiting until they had that open opportunity on the break side. Absolutely. is 2-0. Caitlin, what kind of adjustments are you thinking that Seoul needs to make to get in this game and put some points on the board? I think they've had great defensive pressure so far. I think really just like continuing to um, keep possession once they get the disc in their hands and work it all the way upfield. Absolutely. Here comes the poll. Mackenzie Bailey and Clara Stewart. Ren Vogel as well out for their first points of the game with Torch. Number 72, Therese Dollar. Ortiz with a big grab. Finds number 31. Oh, nice. Dude. Knocked down by Clara Stewart, but a foul is called by number 55, oh, Soju Hukari. fans help me out here oh never mind there she is couldn't find Morgan Lolly on my roster here she is and that's number 18 Hannah Abraham with the first score for Seoul score is 2-1 goes up for Torch's O-line. Picked up by Shrulu, who hits Bjork to center. 
And this O-line has been playing together for a long time. They look cool, they look calm, they look collected. Gabby Quina finds Estes. Ooh, little miscue from Maggie Rowell. Good D by Soul, getting a chance here. Good heads up D. Big inside look, not quite there. She goes from number ten, Danny Ortiz. Question: The comments is Soul in the white jerseys? Yes, Soul is in white, Torch is in black. Very cool shorts. One of my favorite kits in the PU. So this goes here from Seoul. And that's one thing that we mentioned at the start of the game. A lot of new players this year for Seoul compared to Torch. What do you think about these two rosters compared, Kate? Yeah, I'd agree, especially too. Right now, we have a pretty veteran O line out, like you said, for Torch. Uh, a lot of these players have not only played uh, college and club together, but also played on Torch for many years. So it'll be interesting to see uh, this newer Soul roster um, and how they stack up against the That just hung just a little bit too long from Lou. Uh, too much time in the air to have the step. Number 10, Ortiz picking up for Soul. from Duffy, but number 12, Meyer coming down with it. Turn, Torch is disc. And this is the danger zone. You really don't want to be sole here with the turn right at your end zone. A good seal from number 10 for Soul, cutting off that break look. Great grab from Maggie Rowell. Pick was called. Rowell will keep the disc there. In ultimate, a pick is illegal. It's a disadvantage to the defense. So when a pick is called, the defense has a chance to catch up to their person. Jamie Estes with her second score of the game, number 69. Yeah, I think it looks like Torch is still getting their feet under them, especially that O-line uh, taking a little bit to be able to finally score uh, down on our end zone. Score is 3-1 with about two minutes left in the first quarter. In this quarter, a lot of what we expected from Seoul, Naomi Anderson, Vargas, and Ortiz running their offense, but some new players on the scene making some noise for themselves as well. Pros and cons of having a big versus a small roster for these games. Sometimes having a small roster can be to your advantage uh, as the players find their chemistry with each other. Dobler and Griner working together. Vanessa McCorn knocks it down. 
Esparza picking up. Finds Jocelyn. Jass up. Stack getting a little far as the handles are pushed back by Soul's defense here. Great pressure from number five, Annalise Paul. Her first year with Soul. Not sure what that call was. Looks like it was a call uh, just down by the observer there. Teresa Dobler with the disc. Working with new player, sold Gerald. Right on the sideline there. Observer calls soul player out, torches disc. Annie Ortiz picking up. Big score for Seoul. And that's number five, Sarah Kingsley Hart, her second year with Seoul, an Atlanta local. I like how Seoul was able to pick up and pretty quickly convert on that turn. Um, that fast break definitely played to their advantage there. some confusion on my soul roster in the chat I'm hearing that number 10 is Mia Griner the roster that I have in front of me says 10 is Ortiz and 29 is Griner soul fans clear this up for me with the disc. Amy Broom back in Austin. Spent some time in California. Now back in Austin playing with Torch this season. Clara Stewart with the disc. Not finding what she wants to see. Resets to Broom. Mackenzie Bailey. Another new player. Captain Moon Tower, a mixed Austin local team this past summer. Still waiting to hear what her plans are for this year. Maddie Cannon as well, finding Stewart, another new player with Torch, played with Surge in Philly last year. Disc is floaty. Knocked down by Soul. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. We'll take a quick break here and be right back.
right, and we're coming back. Thanks for the comments in the stream and to tech support at home, Chandler Holloway, for sending the corrected game day roster. Roster that we had in the booth was incorrect. Uh, have these updated numbers now. Getting the second quarter kicked off here. Charlotte Duran really working in the handle space with number 13, Hannah Abraham, and number 45, Jennifer Lynn. Sorry to Jennifer, got her misnamed earlier with her big score. That was 45, Jennifer Lynn on la Soul's last score. A great effort from Danny Ortiz. Mendiata picking up for Torch. Ortiz finds Frankie with a big under. A little bit of a miscue with Esparza. Soul with another chance. Teresa Dobler picking up. A big look. A uh, little out of reach, out of bounds. Looking for Ella Meyer, Ellie Meyer, just a little bit out of reach. Very close to being a Callahan's chance for Jennifer Lynn. Frankie with the disc right on the end zone line. A dangerous place for Torch to be. They want to get the disc out of that space. Ooh. Big under look for Vanessa Bacorn. Couldn't quite get all of her hands on it. right on their end zone line. Number eight with a big look. And a score by number 13, Hannah Abraham. Throw by number eight, Danny Ortiz. Great score by Seoul. They were really able to work it uh, cross field for multiple swings. Um, I uh, really liked those looks. Um, I'd also like to add that Torch is sponsored by Texas Ultimate Summer Camp and TUS365. Uh, TUSC uh, provides experienced, responsive, year-round youth ultimate programming for Central Texas and beyond. With decades of service and ultimate education for beginning players through elite, TUSC is dedicated to growing all levels of youth, youth ultimate aligned with their equity-driven mission. Registration is open right now for Tussie's premium uh, or premier program, two weeks of ultimate training and fun at a camp in June. Register at TussieUlti.com and follow Tussie on Instagram and Twitter. Game is tied up now, 3-3. Three, three. Thank you to the chat for bringing it to our attention that our roster is wrong. We are catching up here with who is who for Seoul. Bear with us. Number seven, Lou picking up for Torch. Seoul doing a really good job pressuring these undercuts from Torch. 
their players are right with Torch on these undercuts, putting a lot of pressure, making these catches more difficult. Estes taking off deep. Oh, a little bit of a miscue with Lou and Estes. Number 10, Griner picking it up. Good mark from Maggie Rowell. Caught by Sydney Lofgren. Soul with another chance here. Vargas picking up. Duffy picking up for Torch. Big save from Sydney. Sydney's last name pronounced Lochran. Sorry, Squid. working with a little bit of a flat mark. It's a call on the field. Looks like a travel was called. Disc will stay with Elise York. Some questions in the chat about the wind. It is breezy today, but not a strong upwind downwind. A pick was called. The disco but go back to Raoul. Looks like coaches for Torch are making some changes. One of the rules in the PE, well, if there is a timeout called, you can swap out your whole line which Torch is going to do here. <laughs> Defense chatting about what their plan is. This is going to start with Clara Stewart. Big around by Broom floating. Cannon comes down with it. Huge grab. Broom finds Nikki Gilbert for the score. Kaylin, what do you think about Coach Walker's decision to sub that line out on that timeout call? I think it was great for Torch to be able to get some fresh legs out there. I think that's one of the advantages of having a bigger roster is being able to do a wholesale sub on a timeout um, and be able to get some fresh legs, especially after a longer point. And that was a pretty important conversion for Torch as well. Absolutely. Being able to be fresh and have your first step to be as fast as possible in those end zone spaces important. Looking like that line that just scored going back out to play defense. A lot of new faces on this line. Frenzy Bailey, Clara Stewart, Maddie Cannon, Ren Vogel, and Amy Broom playing with Torch this season. Maddie Easton, second year with Torch. A lot of chat in the
comments about putting 25 on Jasmine and non her first year with Torch. I'll go down and see if I can make that happen. Torch trying to zone this point. It is not very windy. Soul not having very much trouble working it through those spaces. Number three, Alex Kruger really helping run this offense. Great attempt on that bid from Maddie Easton. And that's a score for Kruger for Seoul. Tying it back up, 4-4. Four, four. I believe Kruger came from the WUL LA Astra. Could be wrong, but this is not her first pro rodeo. Big shout out to another one of our sponsors, Scout Real Estate. Scout Real Estate is a presenting sponsor of the Austin Torch, and you can see their logo on the torch sleeves. Scout Real Estate is an Austin-based firm built for smart, sustainable urban growth. Represented by longtime Ultimate player Rob Seidenberg, Scout's unique blend of residential, commercial, and mixed-use expertise delivers creative solutions and winning results. If you're looking to buy or sell a house, condo, or commercial property, get in touch with Rob at Scout, Austin's Ultimate Realtor. Caitlin, I'm noticing in this first half that this game is going similarly to the way the game went last year. A lot of back and forth, keeping the score close. Last year, Torch ran away with it in the second half. This year, we'll see if Seoul is able to stay on Torch's uh, steps and maybe even come out on top. Yeah, I'd love to see uh, a break from one of these teams and really uh, get them off to the races and pull away with a lead. So we'll see if one of the teams can uh, make that work. Oh, big catch from Meg Duffy, saving it. Duffy looking for a reset. Find Sydney Lochran. Soul doing a great job with the pressure, not giving a lot of options to move it up the field. Torch getting pushed back. Lochran finds Rowell. Looking for Queena, comes down with it. Ooh, knocked over. Both players going up from the disc there. Injury called. Great snag from Gabby Queena. Clara Stewart subbing in. Observer, Henry Charbonneau talking it out with the players. This should come in with Stewart on stall zero. Clara moving the disc to Maggie Rowell. Stall count getting up there. Oh, great catch from Lou, who finds Duffy for the score. There was a call. <laughs> Some boos from the crowd. Observers rule that the disc go back to Maggie Rowell.
coming in on stall four. Stuart finds Bjork with a big around to Lou. Torch looking a little crowded, needs to clean it up and make some space in their end zone. Estes with the disc, finding Duffy. Stewart finds Lochran for the score. Yeah, as soon as Torch was able to make some more space, they were able to easily get the score, but they were looking a little crowded there for a bit in the center of the field. So great job by Torch being able to spread out, uh, have some patience, and score. Score is 5-4 with three minutes left in the first half. Great opener for the PUL season. Love to see the games close team and the teams fighting back and forth, increasing the pressure having to bring new stuff uh, and new ideas as the defense figures out their offensive strategies. So this game has been uh, applying great downfield pressure too. It's been really hard for those torch cutters to get open downfield. So I've really liked the defensive intensity from Seoul downfield. Pull goes up. Big undercut from five, Megan Jarrell. Looking deep. Good, oh, good pressure from Frankie. Keeps it out of the hands of El Ma Ellie Meyer. Sparzak kind of stuck with the disc, finds Bacorn. A timeout was called. And this is something um, that a coach can do in the PUL. When they call a timeout, if the timeout is called before a throw goes off, the disc will stay with the player who was holding the disc at the time of the timeout. Torch making some swaps. Broom, Bailey, and Stewart back out. Stewart picking up the disc for Torch. Defense leaving Bailey pretty open. Great backhand around from Frenzy Bailey. Working with Stewart. Finds Cannon. These soul players looking to crowd up the under space a little bit with their handle defense here. Bailey with the disc again. Finds Easton. Good pressure from Kruger. Stewart and Bailey doing a great job working together, looking for the options when they're not there downfield, finding something else. Big up, looking for Cannon, and that's a score. I was really impressed with the handler work that point. Caitlin, what do you think? 
Agreed. I thought Torch had great patience uh, looking to swing the disc until they found those open looks downfield. Uh, Maddie Easton doing a great job uh, on those like toughly contended unders and then eventually is able to find uh, a downfield look. I thought that was fabulous. One minute left in the first half, 6-4. It would be great for Torch to find one more break to create some space in this score before the end of the first half. Seoul put some great pressure on that point defensively. There was a couple of throws where the Seoul defense was right there. Could have really gone either way. I think that was a great uh, strategic sub in of that full sub on that timeout called by Torch to able to get some new personnel and really work it all the way upfield. Game today is brought to you by Breakmark, official sponsor of the PUL. Big layout grab by number 10, Mia Griner. Teresa Dobler with the disc. Good inside throw. Stall count getting high. Looks big. Number 12. Emma Jasky really going for that one, but just out of reach. 30 seconds left in the first half. What Torch really wants to do here is keep possession until the clock runs out. The last thing they want to do is give Seoul another chance with the disc. When the clock runs out, they will finish the possession. Vanessa McCorn with the disc. Finding a reset to Ortiz. And that is time. Torch can take their time here, finding an opportunity to try to score. Once there is a turn, the point will be over. Big hug from Mendiata. McCorn running it down. Her speed just cannot be matched. Right on the end zone line here. We want to be patient. Keep the disc. Stall count getting up. Oh, and that's a turn. Incredible run by Vanessa Bacorn and throw by Mendiata. And that is half. During halftime, don't go anywhere. There'll be a youth showcase game from the Tusk Ultimate Kids for about 12 minutes in between halves.
There's that word professional that men were owning and women weren't any part of that. So we were like, you know what? We need to insert ourselves into this conversation. And we'd pl be playing on cow fields with cow patties. It's not the same. <laughs> there was some pro men's teams for quite a while in the AUDL and another league. And the Austin Soul is a men's team that had existed for quite a few years. Yet again, in pro sports or sports in general, all the money and investment was going into the men's side. Oh, you know, it's, we'll invest in the men's first because that's the most popular and then it'll you know, trickle down and they'll, maybe they'll be a women's opportunity someday. If there is a space for men to play professional ultimate, why not us? I think it's going to be hard every year. Like, well, we don't have this and we don't have that. I would call us like, or compare us to like a bad news bears, you know? We're from Texas, which that's part of it. Austin Torch, I feel like very much aligns with Austin. Pushing for political equity, systemic changes. It's not about me, it's about our team. It's about like, what are we here for? We're here for each other. We're lighting a fire for the next generation.
There's that word professional that men were owning and women weren't any part of that. So we were like, you know what? We need to insert ourselves into this conversation. And we'd play, be playing on cow fields with cow patties. It's not the same. <laughs> there was some pro men's teams for quite a while in the AUDL and another league. And the Austin Soul is a men's team that had existed for quite a few years. Yet again, in pro sports or sports in general, all the money and investment was going into the men's side. Oh, you know, it's, we'll invest in the men's first because that's the most popular and then it'll you know, trickle down and then maybe there'll be a women's opportunity someday. If there is a space for men to play professional ultimate, why not us? I think it's going to be hard every year. Like, well, we don't have this and we don't have that. I would call us like, or compare us to like a bad news bears, you know? We're from Texas, which that's part of it. Austin Torch, I feel like very much aligns with Austin. Pushing for political equity, systemic changes. It's not about me, it's about our team. It's about like, what are we here for? We're here for each other. We're lighting a fire for the next generation. All right, welcome back to the second half. Torch versus Soul. This game is sponsored by VC, the official sponsor of the Torch. They offered their sponsorship of the team within one minute of the team's official formation. No joke. Visit the VC Ultimate website to get all your official Torch and Premier Ultimate League merchandise. Big undercut from Rowell, but getting there just in time, number 72 from Soul to knock it down. Annalise Paul yeah, yeah, yeah. knocking it down. Mia Griner with the disc for Soul. Oh, Estes with the run through D finds Rowell. Oh, Paul again, back to back Ds. Griner working with Vargas. Big catch, staying in, number 44, Jordan Harn. Emma Joshke looking great for Seoul. Oh, little bit of a miscue. Knocked down by Bjork. Huge bid from Sydney Lochran. She is not getting up quickly. Looks like that hurt. She's coming off, Cannon coming in. Cannon with the disc, finds Bjork to get it off the sideline. Good switch from Soul. Yes. Number 10, Mia Griner called that switch on the defense. Great for the position and is in the right spot to knock that disc down. Incredible. Mia Griner with that layout in the running for the turbojet high voltage play of the game. Griner with that second layout injury called. She's coming off. Another 
another thank you to one of our sponsors, Breakmark, for bringing you this live stream today. Coming into this half, Seoul two points down. Caitlin, what do you think Seoul needs to do to catch the lead here? I think Seoul has had great defensive energy so far. Uh, we've seen huge uh, defensive plays by both Paul and Griner. Um, I think I'd love to just see them like keep possession of the disc once they um, get the disc in their hands and just have patience uh, to work it into their end zone. Yeah, I think even this first point, we can see an adjustment in intensity from defense from Seoul. They were already playing tight, but we're starting to see some of those uh, possession changing defensive plays, big layouts and run throughs from both Paul and Greg. Working on the camera right now, bear with us. score with some style points from number 12 Emma Jashke falling on the high jump pad on this track. Score is 6-5. Soul grinding to close this gap. Broom catches the pole, centers to Stewart. Finds Bailey. Soul defenders really poaching these handler lanes. Cannon waiting until she finds what she wants. Easton with the under. Finds Vogel. To Gilbert. Torch want to be patient here, right on their end zone line. Easton with the disc to Cannon for her second score of the game. 
Maddie Cannon playing great so far this game. She's had some uh, huge uh, looks under uh, and then has just been really patient uh, looking for those open spaces downfield. Maddie definitely making her presence known. Big fan base in the stands as well. Speaking of fans, the crowds are packed today for Torch at the Texas School for the Deaf. If you couldn't make it out for this game, we'll see you next time. Thank you again to Discraft. Discraft Ultra Star, the official. Inside look, a little too floaty, Mendiata comes down with it. Dre Esparza with the disc, finds Bacorn. Bacorn is such a speedy player. Oh, great body position from Jassup. Kinsey knees working. Big save from 12 Ortiz. Right on the end zone line again. Stall getting high. Good reset to Esparza. Mendiata back to Esparza. Oh. Some contact between 75 and 95. Saying that Mendiata pushed her, but it kind of looked like a little bit of a trip and losing her balance to me. Caitlin, what did you see? I agree too. It looked like maybe just a little bit of confusion and a stumble on field, uh, but it looks like they're getting it sorted out uh, on the field right now. And that's number 75, Sarah Kingsley Hart. Sorry to Soju Hakari, number 20, for the mix up earlier. A little bit of a zinger from Esparza. Not clear who that was intended for. So with another chance, great defense in the end zone. Great save catch on a little bit of a lofty pass from Hikiro. Excuse me, Hikari. Hokari back with the disc. There's a call on the throw. Timeout was called. Sol is looking pretty crowded over there on that far side of the field. I'd like to see them spread out uh, and try to get the disc moving, uh, open up some space for their cutters to get some uh, longer looks downfield. Another thank you to Rob from Scout Real Estate. They're sponsoring this game. If you're looking to buy or sell a house, condo, or commercial property, get in touch with Rob at Scout. Five minutes left in the third quarter here. Torch leading 7-5. Soul putting the pressure.
Russell starting with the disc about 10 to 15 yards outside of their end zone. A lot of field to work down. Good center swing from Naomi. Working well together. Big Huckett's floating. Gilbert with the D to catch. Gilbert always been a defensive monster. Great body position. She's fast. She's got the hops. Definitely one of my picks for the best defensive players on Torch. Broom with the disc. Finds Easton. Big huck to Gilbert. She's running it down. She's got it. Not quite in. Looking for Vogel by themselves. Easton for the score. Hopped in. 8-5 Torch. A great look from Easton. One of the best ways to score, if a cutter has a big undercut, catches a disc, and then has a look to another cutter, really doesn't give defense the chance to catch up. A great opportunity to score in that space. Excellent catch and run down from Gilbert as well. On that point, I really like the combination, too, that they've had of uh, Broom, Stewart, and Bailey. Uh, they've been really able to swing the disc efficiently and open up space for those big downfield looks uh, like we just saw to Maddie. Uh, so kudos to them. Completely agree. With speed on your team like Easton, like Bacorn, like Gilbert, uh, if the handlers can swing patiently and keep the disc, those speedy cutters will create an opportunity to score. Right over the hands of Soul, Gabby Quina knocks it down. Duffy finds Estes. Finds Quina. To Duffy again. Stall count getting up there. Good defense from Soul. Wow, Lochran for the score. Soul doing what they could there. Saw some switches, saw some seals. Great, uh, great defense from Tristan Grizel. Her first year on the team, but just wasn't enough to stop Torch's chemistry and flow. Score is 9-5. Torch with some, some momentum here, carrying the score four up with three minutes left in the third quarter. I think the home crowd is also really helping to bring a lot of that energy on field. Uh, like Jet said earlier, we have packed stands here in Austin, uh, so it's really fun to see so many people out to support the torch here at our uh, home field. And both sides of big momentum, equally challenging. If you're Torch, you don't want to get too comfortable here because Seoul has shown that they have the speed, the throws to score and stay in this game. If you're Seoul, a four-point gap is a big gap to close, but not impossible. Great mark from Kinsey Knees, forcing Soul to push back on the reset. Ortiz shutting down the easy reset as well. Griner with a good strike cut, a big hook, just a little too far for number 55, Tristan Grizel. Grizel. And I apologize, a second ago I was complimenting number 75 on defense. That is Kingsley Hart. Mendiata, wise to holster if you're not 100% sure you have the huck. 
looks like there was a contact call, no contest. Big under from knees, working well with Jassop. Looking for a dump, it's a little crowded in that dump space. Oh, oh, they keep the disc, Jazz up and knees with the teamwork. Frankie finds Esparza for the reset. Mendiata filling into that handle space. Space looking a little slow for Torch. There we go. Frankie coming in to get some movement going. Big around from Esparza. Looking for Frankie. Out of route. Looks like there was a timeout called right before the throw got off, so Torch will still keep the disc uh, and be knocking uh, right on that end zone. Uh, this would be a huge defensive stop for Seoul, so I'm sure they'll be looking uh, to lock down on Handler D, uh, keep the disc in the backfield, uh, and look to get possession of the disc pretty quickly. Yeah, good vision from the Torch coaching staff. Uh, seeing that the stall count's getting high, the options aren't looking uh, particularly clear and calling a timeout when they see that look um, that isn't looking 100%. 42 seconds left in the second quarter. Torch needs to either score or just keep the disc for 42 seconds here. Don't want to give Sol another chance. Stewart picking up the disc, finding Broom. Good call from the coaches to put some fresh legs on the field. Cannon with the disc. Good roll switch from Soul. Pushing Torch back. This is fine with Torch, they just want to keep the disc. Mackenzie Bailey, great with the rundown. Not a great decision from Maddie Cannon. Mackenzie Bailey striking across there. Cannon likely needs to stay out of that space uh, because Bailey and her defender cannot see them. Looks like time may have gone off. believe they will finish this possession. Stewart, the big inside flick to Easton. Cannon comes down with it. And finds Vogel, Vogel's first score of her torch, torch career. Oh, there's a call on that throw. Travel was called. You do have to establish a pivot foot. So for this situation, Maddie Cannon's right foot needs to stay planted. Her defender called that she moved that foot. movement from the torch stack. Stall count getting up there. Call on the 
field, not clear. Potentially a stall. Torches disc, finds Gilbert to Eason. Oh, likely a foul, foul called there. Doesn't look like number 44 agrees with who came to the disc first. Number 44, Jordan Harn. They go to the observers. Observers confirm the foul. Or no, contesting the foul is going back to Gilbert. Really long last possession here to wrap up this third quarter. Big strike from Gilbert, and that's a score to wrap up the second quarter. Score is 10 to 5, Torch, Soul. All right, and we're back for the last quarter. This stream today brought to you by VC, the official uniform sponsor of Torch. Visit VC's ultimate website to get all your Torch and PUL merch. They have replicas, sun hoodies, windbreakers, and more fan apparel, excuse me, fan apparel available on vcultimate.com. Coming into this last quarter, Soul is down five. Caitlin, what do you think they need to do to make a comeback here? I really liked the defensive uh, energy from Soul. I think once they get the disc, uh, like I've said earlier in the game, it's really just uh, possession, execution, uh, catches and throws. I'd like to see them uh, look for some of those like mid-range unders. I feel like they're working well between their handlers, uh, and then they've just kind of had some miscues on the deep looks. And that's something definitely that can come with chemistry of playing together. How fast is your person that's running deep? What is their closing speed? Uh, kind of just need to play together more to get those. Number 
number five, Megan Gerald, doing a really got, good job running this offense. Wow. Great gainer under with Soju Hikari, finding number 75, Kingsley Hart for the score. It's exactly the offense we want to see from Seoul to put them back in this game, uh, working with the handlers until they see those gaps in the defense to hit an under, and then finding a clear deep with a step for the score. That looked great. Love to see that adjustment from Seoul. Yeah, I really liked that patient offense, uh, and that's a great way to, for Seoul to come out uh, in this final quarter of the game. Uh, I think if they keep this energy up, uh, they'll be able to close some of the gap that Torch has been working on for the last three quarters. Poll coming up for Mia Griner. Poll lands out of bounds. It will come in centered with Lou. Looks like Seoul trying a little bit more of tighter person defense compared to their sag earlier in the game. Big D from Therese, number 27. Dobler. Travel called. But number 18, Naomi Anderson. Emma Griner, or excuse me, Mia Griner with the disc. Oh, almost with a D from Lou. Therese Dobler with the disc again. Seoul has a chance here for a break. They need to keep the disc. Finding Paul and Anderson with the score. 10-7, Seoul putting themselves back into this game with a break. Great point by Seoul. Uh, Griner going almost every other uh, to get that score for Seoul. Uh, awesome energy shift, um, and we'll see if they can uh, hold on to this uh, momentum shift for the rest of this quarter. Kind of what we talked about earlier, just because you're up 10-5 does not mean the game is over. Torch really needs to uh, focus up here and dial in to get their opportunities to score. Keeping the disc, keeping their cuts at 100% and not giving Seoul the opportunity for run through Ds because uh, they are showing, Seoul players are showing that they have that in them. The line out for Torch right now has been extremely efficient all game, so I'm pretty excited to see them uh, work downfield this point. A lot of new players on this line, but they do not look like they've never played together. They look incredible. Uh, we've been talking about all game, how Bailey, Broom, and Stewart are working well together in the handle space until their cutters find space for an opportunity. Broom picking up the disc and looking for Stewart. Finding Gilbert. Gilbert and Easton both really good at finding the space. Stewart in power position finding Cannon for her third score of the game. Great work by Easton, Gilbert, and Cannon to work it downfield. They've absolutely been on fire downfield as a combination this game and have had some huge uh, deep looks that have been uh, completions. 
One other thing to point out, Easton with that leading pass to Clara for her to be in power position to find Cannon, that takes some time and practice and hard work to find that perfect step to put Clara in that right spot for the throw. Great job to the three of them working together for that score. Wind has really died down completely out on the field. Uh, these throwers getting to show off what they have without too much wind holding them back. Lynn and Hakari doing well working together. Torch trying a little bit more of a junky defense in the handle space. And it's very effective. Ortiz picking up the disc. Frankie with the disc for Torch. Stall count getting up there as far as it goes to get the disc. Vanessa filling in to help out. Not quite there. Great defense from number five on Seoul. And that's a score for Torch. Twelve seven with about eight minutes left to go in the last quarter of this game. Throwing out a defensive line that usually has been pl playing offense so far this game. Getting them back on the field here, keep their legs fresh, keep them running around. Vargas picking up the disc, finds Griner. Good pressure from Quina. Number 12 with a step on Quina here. Thrower is not in a great position for that look. Good decision to holster. Emma Jashke knows what she wants. Looking for Griner for another sole score. 12 8. Soul doing a great job keeping themselves in this game. Four points behind, but certainly not out of it with seven minutes to go. Looking for a break chance here. Naomi Anderson, number 18, to pull. 
it'll be tough for Seoul to, especially uh, with seven minutes left, uh, going every other with a smaller roster. Uh, you start to really feel your legs uh, late in the game. But with this defensive uh, energy, it's you wouldn't even know that they've been playing so many points yet this game. Absolutely. A big look looking for Easton. Oh, catch was there, but Anderson really coming in from behind Easton. That was a pretty hard hit. Easton is down. Athletic trainer is out on the field. Tricky and ultimate Frisbee. Supposedly a non-contact game, but uh, with how close you have to be to get a D, sometimes hard to manage uh, keeping things safe in your defensive intensity. Easton's coming off. Jamie S is coming on. Right on the end zone line. About seven minutes to go. Torch 12. Soul 8. Essie finds Vogel for the score. After their first score being denied earlier with a, a call sending it back, Vogel with their first score for Torch this season. Vogel, a huge presence in the Central Texas community, has been a Texas State College staple for years and was involved with San Antonio Problems Club first year. Hitting the scene with a bang. Vogel's also uh, helping coach one of the local uh, WNB college teams this season as well. So uh, has been really involved, but also uh, giving back to the community. All of that added up with the almost full head of height that they have over other players. They're at a huge advantage. Uh, if the thrower can put the throw up, Ren will likely come down with it. Score is 13-8 Torch with about seven minutes left. Torch trying a little more zone defense approach here. Soul punishing it. With no win, these throws are really having no problem. And that is number 75, Kingsley Hart with another score. 13-9. Great job by Seoul to break through that front wall uh, and then just get momentum going downfield. We saw it a little bit earlier in the game, too. As soon as they were able to break through that front wall of uh, Torch players in that sag, uh, they had momentum downfield and uh, pretty efficient scores. up a little short Meg Duffy picking up Jimmy Estes going deep Duffy launching it Estes with the catch finds Lochran 
for the two throw score. It is 14-9. Good defensive pressure for number 29 on uh, so Charlotte Duran. Just not quite there. That connection, one for the ages, Duffy to Estes. Duffy knows to look for Estes. Estes knows that Duffy has the throws and will hit them. Six minutes left, 14-9. back out looks like number three MC Robbins taking the place of Maddie Easton on this line or no, oh you're right you're right sorry excuse me number three is Cannon I'm mixing up the cute blondes on torch it is Frankie Number 15, foul called. Looks like Paul doesn't agree with her. Going to the observer. No, just going to test contest and send it back. Ren Vogel, the huge wingspan on that mark. It's number 12, Jasky with the disc again. Klarn working together with Jasky, keeping the disc but not making a lot of forward progress. Griner coming into the handle space. This is Zone looking pretty effective. Finding Griner, they're breaking through here again. Taking a little bit longer on this time. A little stuck on the sideline, which is where you don't want to be in a zone. Finding Vargas for the reset. Twenty-seven Dobler with the disc. Really great defensive pressure here by Torch. Uh, Sol having a hard time finding those downfield looks. Great throw from number 26, finding Griner in the middle. Here you gotta be patient, some contact from Torch. Paul getting a little frustrated. There's a lot of contact with these players at this point. more discussion. Paul's keeping the disc. Good attempt from Bailey. Disc is floaty and Vogel knocking it down. Great mark by Bailey and again uh, Ren able to come down with that D. Big look, a little out of Frankie's reach. A little less than three minutes left. 14-9, Torch. Torch not sweating too much right now. Up five with only two and a half minutes left. Soul gonna wanna continue to push, score as many points as they can here. Good mark from Nikki Gilbert. Um, looks like a double team was potentially called.
going to the observer for this decision. Finds that inside to 31. Good throw. Paul working again. Oh, oh! I thought Paul came down with that. It looks like it was knocked out. Timeout is called, making some swaps. Only about a minute and a half left here. Torch has done a really good job this game in keeping the pressure on with just uh, consistent good decisions, keeping the disc, scoring a few points, chopping away, and pushing into a bigger lead with a few minutes left in this last quarter. The defensive pressure by Torch at the end of this game, too, I think has made it really challenging for Seoul to work it downfield. Uh, they've had a hard time uh, swinging the disc and tend to be trapped over on this uh, close sideline. No update on Easton so far, but she I they are standing uh, with the team in the huddle, so um, looks like they are okay. Bjork starting with the disc, finding Duffy for the jump in score. 15-9. Soul putting the offensive line out for what may be the last offensive chance they get this game. We've said it again and again, but Torch's chemistry, being a little bit of an older team, players who have played together for a long time, that Bjork to Duffy connection is something we love to see. Really looking forward to seeing Seoul too for the rest of the season as they continue to build chemistry with some of their newer players. Um, their defensive pressure has been really impressive this game uh, and I think that's gonna really pay off uh, as we progress throughout this uh, PUL season. Absolutely, the defensive intensity is there and as they find their chemistry, I think they will have a lot more close games this season. A big look from Hokari. Knocked down by Japlin, who finds Mendiata. Knees with the disc, looking for a reset, finds Ortiz. Reset to Mendiata, who's looking for Frankie, finds him. Soul disc. Oh, big bid from Frankie. Not quite there. Number eight, Danny Ortiz. Putting a lot of pressure. There's a call. Looks like that will be a turn regardless. Big layout from number 19, Ellie Meyer. Uh, disc is going back to number eight, Ortiz. The foul was called, it was contested. Oh. Thirty seconds left. In the last quarter here, we won't finish the possession. When the buzzer goes off, that will be it.
Good pressure from Hokari. Ten seconds left. Torch will need to find an option. Looking deep. Knees intended. Hakari knocks it out of the way. And that is it. That is game. The 15-9 Austin Torch with their home opener. First win of the season. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.